Hi everybody, Gerdy here. You have to find your own pace. And when you're working with a coach, a guide, a trainer, a mentor, whatever it is that that person calls themselves, whatever it is that you call them, they have to take your pace into account. Now, uh, recently I was talking with a friend and we're talking about doing, uh, she's a coach as well, and we're talking about doing a coaching hike slash trek of three days along the Cornwall coast. So we're gonna bring something like eight people along and um, work our magic. And I'm bringing mountain magic to the Cornwall coast and Joe, my friend from Inner Synergy, is um, bringing her magic from Kent and it's all go it's going to be all about doing not uh, about stop stopping the doing and starting to be again now, especially when you do that when you want to do that you have to find your own pace you have to find your own pace in life you have to find your own pace in business and we were talking about where we're gonna hike what we're gonna do And she was very relieved to find out that what I mean by finding your own pace. Everybody has a pace that is unique to them when they hike mountains or when they hike, in this case, the Cliffs of Cornwall. That pace is determined by your breathing. And my experience, especially when it gets steep, is really good to hike as follows. You breathe in on the, on the one step and you breathe out on the next step. This forces you to be very conscious of what it is that you're doing and it enables you to go for a very long time. It also makes it possible to maintain a conversation, which can be a really nice thing when you're hiking, not by yourself, but with other people. But the most important thing is, you don't start panting. It's comfortable. And as I said, you can maintain it for a long time. And you start noticing things that you wouldn't notice otherwise. The smallest things on the trail you will start to see simply because you're moving slow or slower than you would in the city. Now what happens when I bring people into the mountains for uh, a week long trekking, and I'm sure this will happen in Cornwall as well, is people start out at city pace. It's what I call city pace. It's the pace that you're used to when you're in regular life. I'm sure you've noticed, or if you've not, you'll notice it tomorrow after you've seen this video, how people in regular life are always in a hurry. They are always busy, they are always going places, and they need to be there at a certain time. It's very seldom that in the city you will see somebody taking a leisurely walk. So when people come to me and I bring them into the mountains where they hope to find space and time, they start out at the cliff they are used to, city base. Now you can imagine that when mountains are steep, let me see if I can show you where I'm at, the light is not that good anymore, but mountains like that, which are pretty steep, if you are going to try to go up there at city pace, you're not gonna make it to the summit. So you have to find a pace that you can maintain for the entire trek and <laughs> believe me when I tell you I learned the hard way that the pace that most everybody can maintain 
is breathe in on one step, breathe out on the next. Now obviously you don't have to do that on the flat stretches, but when you're going up, in more than 15 years of hiking, I have found that is the best rhythm that you can find. And like I said, it's also a rhythm, a pace that you can maintain for a long time. It's a pace that allows you to maintain the conversation if you want to, but and it is a pace that allows you to take in your surroundings, which is all a part of being. Now, as I said, your coach, your trainer, your mentor, your guide, whatever you want to call them, have to take your pace into account. Now, if you're hiking with somebody like me, um, that person probably has a pace that is higher, faster than your pace. But as with somebody who is very experienced at business, who takes a beginner entrepreneur, business person under their wing, or as the parent who teaches their kid how to walk, we all know we, you cannot expect somebody who is beginning to learn something new to move at the pace of the experienced person. So when I take people into the mountains with me, I slow down. I adjust my pace to theirs so that I can show them how it's done, so that I can help them, so that I can support them, and so that they can find a pace that suits theirs. Because it is impossible to maintain the pace of a person that's faster than you for a long time, whereas it is very possible for a more experienced person to slow down to the pace that you're able to maintain. It's the same in business. You have to find your own pace. You cannot try to keep up with somebody who is further along, who has more training, who has more experience, who is therefore faster than you are. If they are your mentor, your coach, your trainer, your guide, whatever you want to call them, they have to come back to your pace every now and again to support you, to show you how it's done, so that you can then do it as well. If you try to go at their pace, without having learned how to do it, you will probably not succeed. As always, go there greatly. Bye bye.